friends, welcome back to my home. I'm Jen and this is Simply Home and Harvest. We're gonna do things a little bit differently today. I am going to personalize some Christmas stockings for our family. I actually picked these up last year when they were on clearance after Christmas and a couple of them had the correct initial, but some did not. I'm gonna do a little project on my Cricut cutting machine and personalize these. And then also, I'm gonna personalize these stockings for my mom. She has stockings for her children and grandchildren every year, and we've got three little additions to our family this year, and so I'm gonna personalize those for her. Thought I would just bring you along, let you see how I do that. So join me today as we do a little Christmas project, and who knows what else we'll get into. Stay tuned. And then later on, I'll zoom in really close so you can get a better vantage point to view the project. But I thought I would just go ahead and tell you my plans. So on these stockings, these are the ones I'm going to actually use for our family. And for years, and I mean years, since my husband and I were married, which, let me do math real quick. <laughs> That's been 23 years ago. For 23 years, we've had the same stockings that I bought 23 years ago. Well, then when the kids came along, I think I was actually able to find one that I could get for Ella that matched back to the one that Tim, to the ones that Tim and I had. But when Alex came along, I couldn't find anything close. So I bought Alex what I thought was the closest and they, they were all monogrammed with their names and everything. The last couple of years, um, Ella has been saying, we really need to have matching stockings. So. I looked on clearance last year and I liked these. I thought, because it's been really hard. The stockings that I had were pretty large and I could stuff them. And I love stockings. I love being able to fill, do the little stocking stuffers and fill everybody's stocking. That's one of my favorite things. My mom actually passed that on to me because she still does it for us. And we love it. We hope she never stops. But um, I was able to find some that were pretty comparable as far as size. So that made me happy. But there was nothing I could really do up here. I mean, I maybe could get the top embroidered or something, but I thought, well, maybe I'll come up with something to personalize them. And you see that they had little letters on them. That one had a T and J, so we had the ones for Tim and myself, but we didn't have, we couldn't find an E and A for Alex. So what I'm gonna do is either tuck these inside, <laughs> maybe I'll do that for at least the two that I'm gonna use for Tim and I and the others I will cut, but thought that what would be really neat would be to get some wooden gift tags, personalize them by putting our names on each one, and I can use my Cricut cutting machine to do that, and then I can just hang them off of each one. And these are pretty inexpensive. This is a pack of 12 I picked up at Hobby Lobby for $2.99. So, pretty inexpensive. I can use these on other things. You can actually make Christmas ornaments out of these. Maybe put a word on it. Be cute. Joy to the world would be cute. Or like what I have on my shirt on one of these. So, that would be a really neat idea for a Christmas ornament. But I thought that I will attach these. I can attach this, them with this pretty thread. Or I might just attach them um, on there without using any thread. So, that's my plan for these. And I'm going to use the black removable vinyl on this project. It took me a long time to decide what color I wanted to use. I thought about red, but I wasn't sure if it was the same red. I didn't want to throw off the color combination with the red on red. If it was, wasn't was the same color, it might not look right. But the red would have been pretty on the gray or up against the gray. So that's what I plan to do on this. And then on these, which I'm sure my mom probably picked up after Christmas last year, because we knew we had three babies on the way. Just a little side note, I'm referring to my triplet nephews. These are not our own babies. We only have the two, just in case you thought you missed something. Aren't they precious? At that point, but she just picked up little simple stockings and the stockings that she has now for the rest of the family, the names on each stocking are in green lettering. So I wanted to match back to that. And I think she may have had them embroidered, but right now it was kind of hard to get them to the place to have them embroidered. And I can, you know, do it with my heat press. And since it's a short fur and not a long fur, I think we can do it. But we're going to find out together because I've never actually used the heat transfer vinyl on a short fur. So I think we'll be fine. 
with that. And yes, there are three of them. I, I'm missing one, it's on the counter. But we're gonna use the green uh, solid iron-on heat transfer vinyl. I did pick these up at Hobby Lobby. Normally I will order my vinyl in bulk from Amazon, but I didn't need that much for this project, so I didn't want to have a lot of green vinyl that I had no use for. So that's the plan for each one. What I do need to do now is go pull up my Cricut Design Space, and I'm hoping I can take you along with that and show you. Our computer's been very finicky lately, and I've had to actually do the projects from my phone, which is also the device I use to record these videos. So we'll see what we can do. All right, so we got some work to do. Let's get started. Well, I'm thankful to say that I was able to pull up the Cricut Design Space on my computer. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm measuring the tops of the stockings just so I know how large to make each name. Now I'm starting here with Chayden, but I'm not going in any specific order. And I just decided since it's six inches across that I'd rather fill the six inches of space. So my letters are going to be a little bit larger on Liam's name because his name is shorter, but that was just my preference. I wanted to fill the space there. So you can do it either way. If you'd rather have all the, of your letters the same size, then you just won't, you know, you won't fill up that whole space depending on the length of each name if you personalize your own stockings. Cricut has done some updates since I last used this program, so I was having to figure out a few things. But right here, a very important thing to do is to save your work. So I'm just saving this file so that I can continue on to my next project, and then when I'm ready to print, all I will have to do is just pull up each project. Okay, so moving on to our own personalized stockings. Now, I did decide to go with our full given name. So instead of Tim, I chose Timothy. Instead of Jen, I chose to do Jennifer. Now, I know a lot of people would probably just put mom and dad on each stocking, but you know, you can do it however you want. I just knew I already had the T initial and the J initial that I wanted to keep on those particular two stockings. So I chose to do that this way. Now, I did also measure my wooden tags and they are about three inches in length so i'm making each name about that length about three inches which is again going to cause the letters in ella and alex's name to look much larger you could do it either way you know I, it's it really it just depends upon preference i think it would look good either way you chose to do it again i'm going to go ahead and save my work and then we'll head to our cricut printing machine one more thing. I did realize when I pulled up my Cricut Design Space that I was no longer able to access a lot of the fonts that I had before. Even some of them that I had purchased, they were gone. And now Cricut requires you to have a subscription to get a lot of the fonts that used to be available for free just by having the program. So I did go ahead and get a trial subscription and that way I was able to use the Curls font, which I think made their names so much cuter and so I was happy to be able to do that, but it's a 30 day trial. And then I don't know, I'll decide from there what to do. Make sure you hit your mirror button for heat transfer vinyl. Since that's what we're using, we wanna reverse the names. So that I had to put on the mirror effect there. And then we're going to choose the material that we're working with. We are using an everyday iron on. So I'm gonna click that button. And then I need the fine point tool in my Cricut cutting machine. That's already there. Oh, I'm using the Cricut maker, by the way. And now I'm just getting my vinyl down onto my mat. Make sure it's nice and stuck and there are no air bubbles. And then it's time to load it into your machine. So if you have a Cricut, you know how to do this. The air is flashing, you go ahead and load it in. And then when your little Cricut starts to flash there, it's time to begin the cutting process. Now moving on to our next project, since we're not using heat transfer vinyl, we're just using our adhesive vinyl. We do not have to reverse the names because we will have to transfer that vinyl to some contact paper. So leave the names like they are. You do not have to turn on your mirror button. And then I have found for the adhesive um, or the self-adhesive vinyl to use the foil setting that just the adhesive foil I don't know that just seems to work better 
um, with my tools. Again, that's the fine point tool. And I'm going to go ahead and get this secure, but it's the opposite way. The color will be facing you. Now, some people find this part of the project relaxing, and sometimes it is for me, just depending on the material I'm working with, if it's cooperating that day, but yeah, it's pretty relaxing. And this day was not too bad, but some vinyl projects I've had, the weeding process is very tedious, and it does take a lot of focus, and I've made many mistakes where I've had to start over, so, you know, it just depends on the project, but this one was not bad at all. When I say weeding your project, basically what you're doing is you're removing anything that you do not want uh, to transfer to your project. So you can think of it, I'm going to get all gardening on you, but you can think of it like weeding your garden. When you weed your garden, you're taking out everything that you do not want in that garden. So it's the same thing. I'm just doing a little bit of indoor weeding right now. <laughs> but with this self-adhesive vinyl, you have to, or the kind of project that we're using, you have to use a contact paper to transfer everything to. Uh, that's the first step. And I happen to have just this square of transfer paper left. So it was exactly what I needed. And I do like the Paper Studio contact paper. I have tried to use the clear contact paper that you just get in the store or like the dollar store and have not found it to work well at all for me. This is definitely my favorite. So that's my Paper Studio from Hobby Lobby and sometimes you know, you can catch that on sale almost every time I try to get it on sale. So I just went ahead and transferred those straight to our sticky side of the contact paper. And now I'm just using a vinyl scraper to make sure everything is secure. And the weeding tool I use actually came with vinyl that I ordered off Amazon. It's just a pick that you can use for weeding. I mean, a lot of people have favorites. Um, there's the little pins that you can get. I just, I, this is the one I prefer. I don't know. I guess it's just a preference thing, the shape of your hand and what's easy for you to hold and work with. So I'm sure that if I took a poll, everybody would probably have a different favorite, but that's just what I choose to use. All right, I'm moving on to the vinyl and it's the same weeding process, just removing everything we do not need. Now, of course, of course, the the curly font takes a little bit of extra time, but really it just wasn't a bad weeding project at all. This one was actually a little relaxing. As you can see, I'm working at my daughter's desk. I do not take 12th grade English. So if you see that in the background, that's where I am. Now I'm going to adhere all of my vinyl now to the wooden tags. And so I'm gonna use my vinyl scraper again, make sure that I can get everything off of our vinyl paper and onto the contact paper. This is, takes several steps. I'm just making sure I get it nice and centered there. And these were so easy. This could be possibly the, the easiest project that I have done using my Cricut machine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get that where I want it, press it down, and then I will use my scraper again just to now remove my letters from the contact paper and onto our wooden tags.
I'm getting ready to press our names onto the stockings. And the reason I went with green, I don't know if I told you earlier, is I think the other names are in green on my mom's uh, other family stockings. So that is why. And then the font, we think it's a curly font too. But we're just going off memory. So I'm going to wait for our machine to preheat to 280 degrees. And we'll be holding our heat press on for about 30 seconds. Um, I did, one thing I love is the Cricut heat guide. So if you're ever doing any kind of heat press and you're not sure about your material and what temperature to use, pull up the Cricut heat guide. It will give you all the information. Now it didn't have a setting on there for faux fur. So I'm going off of the wool setting. So this is everyday iron on, and then I'm just putting it on what I am considering a wool. Um, that's just the comparison I thought the faux fur and wool would probably be the, the closest thing to that. So we're gonna try it. Hopefully it will work. I really feel like it will because it's more of a short fur as opposed to the long. The long, thick fur, I don't know whether or not a vinyl would work, but I think it will on this. Okay, here we go. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're just going to heat our fabric here for about five seconds. I'm gonna line this up where we want it. That looks good to me. All right, now we're just going to, I think what I wanna do is turn this to where it's not getting so much of the green part. All right, and we're gonna start our timer. And I'm just going to gently press down. Okay. And it said to let it cool before removing. So I'm just going to let that cool for a few minutes. All right, now that it's cooled, I'm just going to start peeling it slowly. So far, so good. These curly letters <laughs> sometimes can be challenging. I, this all coming back to me now. I remember working with the curly fonts before. All right, perfect, yes, it worked, yay. All right, what I like to do is go over it a second time. So what I will do, we'll just put it back in position. I lay this cloth napkin over it so that that heat press will not stick to the vinyl because then you'll really have a mess. And I'm just going to let it go again. That is perfect. I think my mom is really gonna be pleased with that. And I saved her a lot of money not having to go have this embroidered by a machine. Okay, now I know the embroidery is a beautiful finish. It's a lot prettier than this, but this will definitely do the job and you know, at a fraction of the cost. If you're thinking about getting a Cricut machine for yourself or for someone else for Christmas this year, this is actually what I did about five years ago. This was my Christmas gift. And now I chose to use the Cricut Maker or to purchase the Cricut Maker because at the time I was cutting leather, I was cutting a lot of heavy duty materials and that seemed to be the one that would do the best job for those projects. There are many different kinds on the market and some a little less expensive than the Maker. Now, this is uh, also a Cricut product that I'm using here. This is the Cricut Heat Press, and this is the larger one. So if you do a lot of 12 by 12 projects, this is definitely the one you want to use. This is worth every penny. I used to try to use an iron to do my projects, and this is life-changing. It is just, it has a timer on it. You can set the heat for each project differently, you know, for whatever your needs are. It's very adaptable. I also have a smaller one that I use for smaller projects. Definitely worth the money to invest in the Cricut heat press if you do a lot of projects like this.
I love the way these turned out. In the future, I might add some wooden beads, maybe some red and gray wooden beads to the children's stockings just to give them a little something extra since we kept the initials on the ones for Tim and I. But all in all, just a very simple way to personalize your Christmas stocking. I hope you enjoyed today's Cricut project and that you'll consider subscribing to my channel and giving this video a thumbs up. Until next time, friends, remember to live simply, use what you have, and enjoy the moments you've been given. See you in the next one, and Merry Christmas.